Hey Wargamers, my name is Chris with Wargame Creations, and today I'm going to be bringing you a video showing you how I paint my Zone Mortalis walls for Necromunda. Stay tuned. First thing I'm going to do is grab my destroyed columns. I'm going to take some super glue and some snips. I'm going to throw some super glue in these holes here, and I'm going to use some 3D printer filament to fill those in for rebar. So, I just put a little dab of super glue over top of all the holes. I get an extra long piece, <clears throat> and then I just cut it as I go, leaving a little bit extra so that we can bend it and take more off as we need. Usually I end up with something that looks kind of like this. Next thing I do, I'll go through with a lighter, kind of heat them up, and bend them down to make it look like, you know, the force of <clears throat> gravity brought down the rebar with the concrete when it blew up. So, kind of play with those, bend them into place. They want to kind of go back into their shape, so I'll light them with a lighter, bend them, and then kind of blow on them a little bit to pull them down. This really helps add to the effect of it looking old and broken. Next thing I'll do, I'll go through with my snips and I'll kind of randomly pick and choose which ones I want to snip off down to an appropriate length. Nothing too crazy. Every now and then, maybe one's a little long, you can always cut it when you're finished. Next step I do, I go through, I prime them with black primer, nothing crazy. Then I start with a dry brush. And when I do that, this is actually wraith bone. You could use white or whatever, but this really helps get the color that I achieve in the end by putting this down and I just kind of go through hit the largest areas if you kind of go a little bit over and hit the sides it's not a huge deal same thing you know just working my way around making sure I stay you know 70 percent 80 percent away from the corners next what I'll do I'll move on to the blue I'll dry brush the blue and when I'm doing this I'm going kind of against the direction of the edges so that that way the paint's really sticking on the edges more than it is on the flat surfaces and it gives the appearance that you know this is like an old blue metal versus you know just black with blue on the edges of it so go through and i'll hit all of these make them all look the same you could leave it this color without washing it, but when we apply the washes, it ends up bringing the color down a little bit. I move on. I sponge the yellow on here. I use this for my caution stripes. As you can see, I tried to make the caution stripes unidirectional to where I can flip it, and it always looks like it kind of makes sense. Um, what I'm doing here, I'm showing, basically I'll put one piece of tape down, Whichever, you know, thickness I'm using for my stripes, and then I'll put one piece of tape directly next to it as my spacer, and then come back with a third piece of tape, and I'll actually tape that down and remove the middle piece. That way, <coughs> makes nice, easy, quick, clean lines. I'll come through with the black. I'll sponge the black on, same kind of way I did the yellow. No particular method here, just kind of leaving maybe 5-10% of the yellow from underneath, which isn't a big deal, because in this next step here, we're going to actually go back through with just a tiny little bit of yellow on the sponge, and just kind of make it look like the black's flaking off. You can kind of go around the edges a little bit more if you want, and make it look like, you know, when it was taped off, maybe it wasn't so clean. Uh, 
But yeah, I'll just go over the top of the black with the yellow, and then that way it looks like the paint is peeling off of the yellow itself. And then what we'll do in the next step, we'll go through and we'll make it look like the actual, all of the paint is peeling off the wall around the pillars. So when I do this, I'm mostly focusing around like the edges or anywhere where like there are joints in the concrete. Really helps give it that old worn look. Next thing I'll do, I'll go through, I'll paint all the details in, I'll work with the copper, I'll paint the rebar black. That way it's a little bit easier to work with in the next steps. Then I'll go through, I'll apply my wash to everything. I start, I usually do the panels, let those dry a little bit, and then I'll work my way around the edges so that, that way I'm not touching anything. When I'm finished with that, what I'll do is I'll go through with the dry brush of the wraith bone again. And I'll just hit all of the edges of what I just washed to give it a little bit more pop around the edges, kind of like edge highlight. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some typhus corrosion. Basically, I'm just putting that mostly around the bottom, a few specks at the top. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through with Riza Rust and give it a dry brush over top of all of our rusty metal parts. Do the rebar and then same thing, making sure that I'm pulling the paint against those panels so you know, go in the opposite direction of the lines that I'm trying to hit. Next what I'll do is I'll apply this Nylic Oxide, or however you say it. Um, I started out by just going around the edges of this, but I ended up just throwing it over top of all of it for later. I'll show you why. So, I also added some to the streaks underneath of the rebar to make it look like it was running. I also took some orange paint, watered it down pretty good. I believe this is the Leho Clear Orange. And I went ahead and I painted little tiny streaks underneath of the rebar just to give it a more rusty running look. And then I used some AK rust streaks effects. Painted those on. Let those kind of sit for a little bit. And then came back through with like an enamel thinner. Put some of that on a brush. And then just kind of washed down the AK rust effects that I had just put on. It really gave it like a old, runny, rusty look to it. Next thing I did, I went back through with the copper. And I kind of dry brushed over top of all of those things that we hit with the nylic oxide. And then that way... Kind of still looks like it's old and worn, but it's also down in the crevices, and I didn't have to be super careful when I was doing it, so really helped improve on speed. Thank you guys for watching so much. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also, leave in the comments what kind of content you would like to see in the future. If you'd like to see shorter, quicker videos, just kind of giving a rundown of the progress that I've been working on, let me know. If you'd like to see longer videos, I can do that as well. Thank you guys.